Anthropogenic climate change is defined as human-caused climate change. As the political debate rages on regarding this concept, measurements of CO2 in the atmosphere taken at the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii show us that there has been a 16% increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere between 1960 and 2010. This we think is kind of significant because of course with anthropogenic change and future warming, we wonder what's gonna happen with the climate of northern New Mexico and what this record from the past appears to be telling us is that we can anticipate drier conditions if the past is any uh, indicator for the future. Many communities in the western United States rely on winter snowpack in nearby mountain ranges for their water supplies. These places where melting snows replenish the water table are called snow-dominated environments. If winter snow amounts decline due to changing climate, many of these communities that are dependent on snowpack will face reductions in water quantity, and in some cases, issues of water quality. The Valles Caldera is one of these mountain regions where the amount of winter snowfall has a direct impact on water supply. The Valles is an ideal location to conduct research into changing climate for a number of reasons. One, it is somewhat secluded, yet accessible for researchers. Two, the watershed feeding the Jemez River is easy to calculate due to the fact that there is only one outflow point. And three, it is an important source of drinking water for a major Western city. Much of the research being conducted in the Valles is focused on how the hydrology and ecology of the system work right now. Knowing how it works before there are drastic levels of change will give researchers a baseline to see what is being impacted as rain and snowfall change. The main idea with this project, the main question is, we want to know what's the effect of climate change in snow-dominated environments. In this case, if we want to answer that question, we, want, we, we need to understand how the system works in the present climate. And so what we are doing here is we are looking at how the stream and the aquifer interact, and how these meandering streams are helping that interaction or mediating that interaction. So that's why we have all this instrumentation here, because we use it to track how the two systems, the stream and the aquifer, are connected. We track also how the chemistry is evolving over time and in space. In our case, we are looking a little bit more at the physics of how these two are connected. So we look at how the water levels change. So if the level changes in the stream, how is it changing in the aquifer? How is the temperature, the conductivity of the water? All those parameters are kind of a proxy to understand how they are connected and how they interact. You pretty much just measure what's going on in the stream. So you have an input signal, you can see it like that. And then you have a response in the aquifer. So we measure, these sensors for instance measure temperature in the stream and also the level of the stream. And then if there is some change, for instance due to a precipitation event, then we can capture it here and see how that event had an effect in the subsurface. So to measure it, we have different instruments here. Uh, one of them is we have this system of observation wells, and each observation well has a pressure transducer. And that transducer is measuring temperature, electrical conductivity, and water levels. So we see the fluctuations. In the streams, we have uh, temperature sensors. So each of these bars that you see here, they have temperature sensors at different depths inside the sediment. And we also have pressure transducers in the stream. So those ones help us to know if the stream is changing in level and also if temperature is changing their conductivity, etc. So the sensor devices, they essentially have an internal data logger. And so what they do is we essentially tell them how often we want them to measure. And then they just start logging for long periods of time. For instance, during the monsoon, we want to go faster than 15 minutes because there's a lot of change or, or we expect a lot of change. So we tell these guys to log every five minutes and then they record a data point of these three variables, temperature, electrical conductivity, and pressure every five minutes. And so you can see the data in real time if you want to. You can collect all the data that you have been logging 
for the last month or so. So there is a lot of uh, questions around climate change. I mean, how important is it going to be? How much is going to affect our sources of water, the amount and quality of the water that we get? If we want to be able to predict how changes in climate are going to affect the hydrology, we really need to understand how the systems work right now, how they respond to changes. That's one of the reasons, for instance, we are really interested in the monsoon season, because the monsoon season actually introduces change, a lot of change in the system. I want to see how the system responds to that change. Now we can say something about what's going to happen if climate changes, if there is more precipitation, if there is maybe less amount of precipitation but a stronger event, things like that.